Greetings once again. Here we are at House to House DI, uh, meaning uh, H2A Discipleship Institute. We're in Wildemar, California. We want to welcome you to our Terabyte, which is a word of encouragement. Uh, we use out of Romans 13. That's where we got the scripture to uh, bring these spiritual uh, landmines <laughs> that blow all the enemies, blow sin out of the out of your existence it blows everything else the the landmine is you coming into the revelation of the holy spirit or the ruach kadosh and that is the hebrew term for the function ruach kadosh for the function of the holy spirit i prefer to use ruach because it's a more intimate now watch the word mashiach in Hebrew means anointed one or one that pours, smear, and rubs, okay? Christos is also the anointed one, but Christos is not more than one. It's singular, okay? It's So when you're reading and looking for e scriptural evidence to bear witness because the scripture says to be correct is out of the mouth of two or three okay witnesses or two or three scriptures let all things be established so when you and i want to establish accountability and come into a complete spiritual journey that will complete one phase of your spiritual understanding you've got to stay true to the word so you can't go ahead and want peace and deny truth because when you preach the truth peace will come but a lot of us want to keep peace among the people if i say that they'll leave if i say that they won't give if i say say that they ah, oh, i'm going to be hated and i'm going to be smeared and talked about but so what i'm a dead man so now i'm gonna give you what he gave gave me so i can uh encourage all of you because this walk is a walk of suffering you enter into trials and tribulations uh, it says confirming the apostles that or the disciples that become apostles in the book of acts it says confirming the disciples that through much tribulation they enter into the kingdom look at that so now watch this i'm going to break it down as easy as i can in the outer court, you're sin conscious, so you'll also be devil conscious and self conscious. You have that understanding, that biblical understanding in the realm of what I call teaching from Exodus 25, uh, the tabernacle of Moses, that the father instructed Moses because Moses was a prophet to the nation of Israel, but he was a son to the father. Oh my God, if you can only hear me. Everyone prior to Moses were sons to the father. But you had to catch the genealogy. You had to catch the, the, the term to enter into a relationship of face-to-face -face with your father. You had to enter into covenant. And covenant was keeping the Hebrew customs and traditions and a word present truth word keeping it no matter what came your way so the father turns to abraham prior to moses and he says abraham i know you will command your children therefore i will enter into covenant with you because you will keep my torah okay now watch this torah is instructions torah is covenant Torah is the highest form of worship. When you worship the Father, you keep Torah. Now, when you start worshiping the Father from an understanding of the Torah, you come into the place where a lot of us uh, use this Ian Sof. Ian Sof is a spiritual dimension of a rhema word that not many are knowing, but uh, one of my rabbis that I watch and listen to... Um, He's powerful. I'm not going to mention his name. You need to search it out like I did when I heard the term. But Ian Sof is... <laughs> Josh, I'll let you explain Ian Sof. Ian, Ian, so this is Elder Josh, who is a prodigy, who is a son, 
who has gone through the fire, has gone through the testings, has gone through the steps, has gone through the process just to get from the gate to the brazing altar. And he tied himself down willingly to the four horns of the altar. And the four horns speak about a whole nother dim dimension. And uh, so I'm going to have him just to tell you the definition of Ian Sof. Go ahead, Josh. So Ian Sof, in our research here at H2HDI, we actually see that it is the father, the Aleph Tav. He is everything that he created. And at the same time, he is the nothing he has created also. So that is the hidden mystery of what Ian Sof is. It is spelled E I N S O F. Please research that and be a good steward and a diligent researcher in that. And you have to research. And, the, and one of the things that is so powerful is each one of us have the DNA of Ian Sof. Each one of you. If you can see yourself, when you look in the mirror, you see who you are, and that's a fallen nature. Why? Because you were related to the first Adam. And since he fell, you fell along with him. But then when you see the other side of Ian Sof, <laughs> the Ian Sof that carries and unifies the whole Aleph Tav, he's everything. He produced and created all. Everything you and I can hear, can smell, can touch, can hear, and see. I hope that's all five of our natural, fleshly, uh, what do they call them? Uh, senses senses or, or functions that the Father gave us. But in the Spirit, watch this. In the Spirit, you have the fivefold ministry. You have the hand of God all through Scripture when you're reading in the Old Covenant, when you're reading in the, uh, the dawning of a new day coming because all through the Old, the Father spoke of a Son. All through the Old, the Father spoke of an incarnation of the Son. The fivefold, fivefold ministry carried the parables, <laughs> The Proverbs and the Mysteries, or the Parables, the Mysteries, and the Proverbs, depending how you view it. If you follow Paul the Apostle, he, when he spoke in his epistles, he always started his letters as a sent one. Uh, he, it, he chose me to reveal the Son in me. I wasn't given this by man or, the, or by the blood of man, but by the blood of the Lamb. He set me apart, and then it says... <laughs> This is what's so phenomenal that to reveal the Son in me. Paul was a sent one, but the Son that was revealed in Paul helped Paul to bring all of us into a kingdom example of life everlasting where you would defeat death and the sting of death. So here in the book of Matthews, I want you to see this. Ian Self is part of what, where we're headed right now. I just want to give you a little bit of insight. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He didn't mention anything other than that. Now just watch closely. Verse 2. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. If you're not reading... And flowing in the spirit that lost you because you would say, well, wait a minute. He called his 12 disciples. Now they're 12 apostles all in one verse, all in one chapter, all in one uh, uh, ebb and flow. Well, what he was doing, he was bringing distinction to those, oh, if you can hear me, to those that would operate in the church realm in the outer court and cast out, come on now, are you with me? Because they got the power to come against unclean spirits, to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Are you listening to me? Then, so those are, that's the realm where you and I operate at in the outer court. The outer court, I don't have my pointer here to point to it, but if you've been following this long enough, you know there's an outer court, there's the uh, many are called, few are chosen, and least endure till the end. Okay, the least group is what the Father's looking for. Okay, so now, Father is 
whew, he releases a frequency to the sun. The sun picks it up because the sun is the the fullness of the Yahed bodily. He operates by Logos, by revelation, and by Rhema. Three, why? Because in the 30-fold, there's Logos. In the 60-fold, there's revelation, but in the 100-fold, it's Rhema. Why is it Rhema? Because it comes from the Father's mouth, from his pay. Hebrew, the mouth is the pay. <laughs> and the Father, since the Father's spirit, for you and I to comprehend that, he had to... <laughs> He had to condescend himself into a lesser being to become the son in the flesh so that you and I could see the word made flesh. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting that you're the word becoming, your flesh becoming the word. You're the word becoming, your flesh becoming the word. He wasn't flesh. He was the word that became flesh. Flesh was the, the vehicle Flesh was the vehicle to allow the Father to come and live among us. Flesh was the vehicle to allow the Father to live among us. Hey, I'm just excited because I understand what he's saying, okay? So now that's chapter 10. And he goes on through and, and jumped to, to verse 5. It said, these 12 Yeshua sent forth and commanded them. These 12 what? <laughs> you got to go back to the context, okay? Verse 2, it says, now these are the names of the 12 apostles, okay? And verse 5, and these 12 Yeshua sent. That word sent is a, a very important word because that word sent is always comes either after or before when he's addressing apostles. He didn't address the disciples. Look what it says. And when he had called, verse 1, when he had called unto him the 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. And when he called, all disciples, all believers are called. But you got to choose if you want to become from the called. Many are called and few are chosen. No, no. He, he, see, he's not saying I'm going to choose few of you. He leaves it open to all of us. But we become the few when we choose to go to the next level. Because many of us don't want to choose because you get familiar with the prosperity message. You get pr familiar with the prophetic message. You get familiar with the kingdom message. You get familiar with all the different messages, all the different denominations. Some apostles are over many denominations or they're, they have many different groups that they're covering in their apostolic authority. It's part of the scripture but if you want to enter into the kingdom, you got to come to a different format, a different platform, a different schooling, a different impartation, a different language. Do you know the kingdom has a language? Well, that's for you and I to keep searching and learning. Now go with me over to Matthew's, I mean to Luke 10, Luke 10. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Luke 10. Hallelujah. Okay, after these things, Yahuwah appointed other 70s also and sent them two by two. What? Remember what I said, the word sent. When you hear the word or read the word sent, read that. It's connected. It's called apostolos. It's part of the apostolic, yes, foundational term. So when you make, meet an apostle, he was sent from heaven. His development needed to be, he was called, formed, and made in the image and likeness of the Father and the Son. And the Ruach testified, why? Because both the Father and the Son become a witness. If you understand the tabernacle of Moses and read it closely, the layout, there's two angels, and the angels were, they used, the women used, hallelujah, and the two angels, the women embroidered, embroidered with gold and silver, with all these precious, uh, um, thin, thin, can you imagine how thin the, 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 the gold rope had to be, to be, to be embroidered into the image of an angel, a malakim. Why? Because it was significant that the father and son were in relationship in eternity. Before anything was formed, that was formed. 
That's why Revelation says that the Lamb of Yah was what? Crucified before the foundations of the world. Before anything was formed, they already met at the altar. What altar? The altar of the universe. The universe had an altar where the Father and Son altered their lives and they one appeared on the planet while the other one ha -ha, covered the one that appeared. Well, what am, are you saying? The Father and the Son were one. The Father sent the Son that was one with him. That's why the Son said, why do y'all marvel at the things that I do? It's not I that do it, but it's the Father in me. And then I believe in, in John 5, he says, don't worry about what you're going to say. When you speak, I will speak for you and you will know it's me speaking through you in that hour. So here in, in Luke 10, he begins it. Let's follow with me. He says, uh, he gives, he appoints other 70 also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place. Now watch, he sends them into every city and place whether he himself would come. Okay, so now watch this. I'm going to just go quick. I'm, I'm going to teach it out. I'm going to show you. But the New Jerusalem, the city that is descending from above coming down is among us now. The sons, the apostles, the fivefold ministry have the information and the impartation. They have the information for transformation. They have the information for impartation. They have the information for transformation. They are full of the kingdom of God. But what we've done, our order fell out of divine order and got into a misleading order because we were trying to heal the church. But the kingdom had to manifest so that the church could be healed. Why? Because the church in its own spiritual dimension of reality is the bride. And the bride had to be offered up to the groom without spot and wrinkle. So now watch verse 2. <laughs> Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great. And we stop right there and we go, man, we're going to have the greatest. Now watch this. We're going to have the greatest harvest. Hallelujah. Who's saying this? Pastors, teachers, evangelists are saying this. They haven't come under apostolic prophetic foundation. So they put the horse before the cart or the cart before the horse, depending what way you're riding. Hebrew is written from right to left. That's why Isaiah said he knew the end from the beginning. Why? Because he's seen it that we all needed to come. Whew. Isaiah prophesied, he said, listen, you have ears to hear, but you hear not. You have eyes to see, and yet you see not. Why? Because it, they were refusing to come under the apostolic and prophetic ministry. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, if you follow Moses all through his writing, he talks about prophecy, and he was a prophet in the nation of Israel, but yet he was a father. Okay, let's read on. Therefore said he unto them, he's saying unto the them that are the 70 that gathered to receive authority, not the, <laughs> not the 12 in the book of Matthew's chapter 10 who later become apostles, okay? There's a difference now. The disciples are in the church realm. The apostles graduate into the kingdom realm. They're starting to bring order out of chaos. Why? Because the Father spoke order out of chaos in the book of Genesis. Bereshit. Okay, Bereshit. <laughs> the word Bereshit, Hebrew, means father and son. You can find it in there. Got no time to teach that. It. It's Eretz. Okay, but we'll get there. Hallelujah. The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore... <laughs> to Yahuwah of the harvest that he would send forth labors into his harvest. <coughs> oh my goodness. Twice he uses the word send and sent or send and sent in the scripture. S-E-N-T, S-E-N-D, okay? So now the S-E-N-D followed after the S-E-N-T. All apostles are sent. Now, you may be under an apostolic prophetic ministry. Why? Because the Father sent you 
and S-E-N-D, send you to sit under that because that's your governors and tutors until the appointed time of the Father to manifest the apostolic or prophetic ministry that you would take on, okay? Then he goes on and he says, you know, I mean, he, he would send forth labors into the harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor script, shoes, nor salute no man by the way. Why did he say that? Because in the book of James, Paul says, salute the saints. The only reason he <coughs> the only reason he would say salute the saints is because he was addressing the saints that were in the kingdom. They made, oh my goodness, they made a distinction. They knew many were called. They knew few were many are called and few are chosen but he was speaking to the least that would endure till the end. That's why Paul said about himself, I fought the good fight of faith. I finished my task. What did he do? He raised up Timothy, Titus, Philemon in the scripture. And then he left a letter in the book of Hebrews. And of course, the scholars fight on who wrote and who didn't. I'm not a scholar from that dimension, but I'm a scholar. I got my PhD in biblical theology or scriptural theology. And the Father gave me the insight. And that's why as a reformer, I'm taking you all the way back also to reform his name from the Hebrew, which was the first language that the Father spoke to Adam. I know you may, it may sound difficult, but he wasn't calling them Jesus. He called them by name, Yahuwah. Okay, and his name was Yahshua, Yahuwah, Yahshua. So the father son had the Y-A-H in their name because it was the poetic term for both the father and the son. Whew. That's why the father son said, if you've seen me, you've seen, seen the father. But no man has seen the father and lived. Exactly. That's why you died when you went to the cross with him. You were buried when he got buried. And you rose when he rose. And you sit at the right hand of the majesty on high because he sits there. Are you in him? Do you move in him? Do you have your being in him? If your answer was yes in all three, though you're not in your fullness and in your completeness but you're under construction to complete the task watch this and into whatsoever house you enter first say peace be to this house <coughs> he's speaking to you and i now that's why we're called house to house why because he said in in uh, ezekiel 43 and 44 son of man show the house to the house and when they learn the, that they've been out of the pattern, out of the divine order, then they will understand their iniquity. What's iniquity? Iniquity is another term for twisted, twisted teachings. teachings. Twisted teachings. Twisted teachings. I'm going like this because I couldn't see Josh because the lights are on me, so I needed to look. What was he talking? Oh, perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. And into whatsoever house you enter first, say, peace be to this house. I speak peace to all those that are listening. I speak shalom to all those that have ears to hear and eyes to see. Why? Because you need some shalom. And the more shalom you use, the more shalom you walk in and you develop in your spiritual understanding. And when you hear certain biblical scriptural truths, it won't take you off guard and you're like, whoa, I never heard that. Where'd that come from? It's in the scripture. It's in the scripture. See, that's why you see a shift going on right now. There's a great big shift. There's new apostles come on up. Not new, but everything they're doing, they're reforming what's already been. That's why it's a re, R-E, the re's of God, the re's of Yahuwah, the re's of Yahuwah. The re, the re, R-E, re. Why? Because before we were formed, now we're being reformed. Before we, <laughs> we had penance, now we are repenting. Do you follow the re's? Okay? When you hear that and see that, you do a, a 
take all the reads and put them and write them down, you'll have a message. But the key is you don't read to get a message, you read to enlighten who you are in the message. Because then you become that message for this messed age that we're living in. You heard it first. Hallelujah. Verse 6. And if, and if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. Huh? Yeah. If you're walking in the peace of the son in you, when you meet another kingdom saint in the kingdom community, in the heavenly celestial sphere of understanding you can speak peace shalom one to another Come on. and the in your peace shall rest upon it if not it shall turn to you again you've got that power to take the peace from a household that doesn't understand the kingdom many are going to fall away now because they won't make the transition they cannot handle the pressure of process because you come in as a believer in the outer court. You come in as a disciple in the holy court. And you become a son in the holy of holies. And you can't be a father until you go through the baby stage, adolescent stage. Napios, pation, technon, weos, pater. Those are the Greek terms in the scripture. And we teach them here. Until we meet again, I'm going to have to stop right there and just go for it. Hallelujah. Remember, let me read this last verse. Verse 6, and if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. So receive your peace tonight. Receive the shalom that the word of Yah is bringing forth through me, a clay vessel. A vessel of clay that has had the coal from the altar burn my lips. So I speak nothing but him. Nothing but the Father. May this, as I release the presence that's in me and coming through me right now, because it's him, it's not I. May you release. Father, release your shalom to your people, those that have ears to hear and eyes to see. Until we see them again, we're here from house to house, Discipleship Institute. I'm Menechem Yah. That is my Hebrew term, Hebrew name, Menechem Yah. And I just want to say again to all of you, we love you here at House to House Discipleship Institute. I'm trying to stay in my lane. There's many other apostles that I fellowship. We talk. We're even becoming more closer every day because the Father wants it that way. If you're going to be part of the harvest, believe me, the harvest that we read in Luke 10 and Matthew 10, <laughs> there's no labors. The laborers have to be taught how to labor and the tools of their labor are apostolic and prophetic. Until we see each other again, shalom.